Hey guys, welcome to the next Smoke and Flame quick tip. Now this one's going to be about points position maps and uh, how we can use them using a cool matchbox node which is available thanks to a very kind person. So I'm just going to go back click and go new color source and I'm just going to set this to 25 frames a second and set this to 1 second, 1.0 and create. I'm just going to back click open in sequence and go effects create connect effects. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just load in my footage. So I'm just going to go read file and I've got three source, uh, two sources here. Um, I'll just click load. You guys obviously have access to these. Um, but I just changed my frames to 15 because that's actually 16, which is my source. Um, and if I just scrub through, you see it's a really, really crude uh, camera movement of a default uh, Cinema 4D guy. Um, but uh, hopefully this will uh, give you guys an example of uh, why you'd want to ask for a points position map from 3D and um, give you a reason to uh, use it in your workflow. So that's our source. Um, it's just rendered in. There's nothing special about that. But then we go to this guy and you see here's our position map. So again, we scrub through. It matches the camera move. Um, again, there's no aliasing. And um, sometimes you will get problems just like we did with the, uh, the old uh, UV thing that we did. So again, sometimes you might want to render out double and then scale down. Um, but for this, I'm just going to leave it like this. And um, I'm just going to press F4 and you see I've rendered out a mat as well, um, which encompasses the floor. Um, and again, depending on how you want to use this, you might want to render a mat separate just, uh, just for the element you're trying to affect. Now I'm just going to swipe to the left and just go to uh, M, press M, there we go, and just pull out. And I'm just going to grab in the post mat um, and just select that and press load. Now the first thing before we get into this, I just want to scroll down and just thank uh, Lewis Saunders, who is um, the developer that made this and um, has made it available for free. So thank you, Lewis, and um, hopefully you guys will drop him a line and say thank you as well. So if we double click on this, the first thing you see is asking for front mat and position mat. So I'm just going to go shift alt and go front and next one is going to be mat and then one more time and that will be our position pass. So I'm just going to press F4. And the first thing to note with this is with our color that we pick, we need to change this to 16 floating points. So if you just select in the color plot, you see it defaults to 8-bit. I'm just going to change this to 16-bit and press OK. Now, if I press F3, we're going to see our position pass. So I'm just going to scrub through somewhere that I want to have my, uh, my mat made and generated. So I'm just going to select somewhere here on this arm. So I'm just going to, again, click in the color plot, grab the pick, and just select here and just press enter or OK um, and then press F4 and the first thing to do to kind of see how this guy's working is just pull up on tolerance so I'm just going to press control and spacebar and drag up on the tolerance and you see we got this little overlay of um, what's been affected by this mat if we zoom in by control spacebar and pull back um, and I just pull along here you see that's only in affecting the uh, the position map um, and it's all thanks to the position map so I'm just going to pull up on the softness too and just again I'm just going to get rid of the calculator and do control spacebar and zoom up so we really soften it out so you see now we've got a really nice soft mat and it's slowing down a bit again this is on a laptop but you see the best thing about this if I go to fit and jump back and then scroll through is you see it follows the shape and follows the geometry without the need for FBX. So you can use this for a lot of things. So if I press F4, you see there's a mat that's being generated now. And I'll just go F4 one more time. Again, we have a lot of controls too, just for offset. So we can move it on the X, move it on the Y, and move it on the Z like you'd expect. Close that. And also for scale. So scale X, scale Y all behave exactly how you'd, um, how you'd expect. Now again, um, what you see now is literally just, just a, an overlay. What we're really concerned with is the output, which is the mat. So if I swipe to the left and then just grab in a generic color corrector and just uh, shift alt the front. And then for the mat, I make the output from the, uh, the position map mat that we created. And again, this is going to be crude and harsh, but you can see we can then just dial in that effect to only affect that area. And again, um, this can be really handy and, uh, I guess the best thing that I would uh, say for me in my workflows is this just kills off the need for unnecessary roto. Um, so I'm just going to swipe to the left again. Just press Control Escape. 
So, I mean, that's, that's the most basic uh, implementation of uh, using this from a grading standpoint, you know, where you want to just dial down an area, you know, say director says, we just want to dial down this bit. You can dial that in, select that area and just pull it right back. But sometimes, uh, or more often than not, it's not that simple and you need a more complex adjustment or fix to 3D, especially when you're uh, working with people behind your back. So it's going to throw that away and go to all nodes and press A. It's going to grab it in action. And um, this, this example, I'm just going to double click on it and press escape and click on import. And I've got an FBX um, of this uh, scene. Um, again, it's a very basic geometry, very, very basic scene, but um, hopefully you guys get the point as to why this is so powerful. So I'm just going to select that and click load and then press F4 and then go to my output and just go from result camera to camera one and go to fit and just go to my node preferences and go to rendering and you see it's the wrong res, it's 1920 by 1080, which this isn't. So I'm just gonna go shift alt, kiss him in, double click on the action, go to node preferences and change this to background res and go apply plus scale. So if I press F4, you see, it's actually not working, which is probably my fault. Um, but it might actually be, do, be to do with uh, the aspect ratio. And something's not happening right with this. And, uh, you know, this could be due to a lot of things. But the main thing is, is from here, I'm just going to reapproach this. I'm just going to go down, throw that away, go back to my action, double click, go escape, back to the action bin, and go to import and grab that in again. And press F4 output and change that to camera one again. So again, we scrub through, it's doing what we want. Um, again, the wrong, the wrong size. But if I, again, if I go F4 of that and say for this example, director said, um, again, if we look at the result, we want more ambient inclusion. We want more, more detail and contact just on this armpit area. But again, not just on this bit, because that's where this kind of surpasses the traditional FBX route. Um, they said, you know, we want it over this area here to encompass over here. So, you know, it's really, really not that hard. So I'm going to control escape, double click on that, press F4 and turn on ambient occlusion. And again, you can see we're getting some extra ambient occlusion up here. Um, you know, we can turn up the density and, you know, say five. You know, this is a, again, a crude example. It's, it's not meant to look pretty. And the next thing I'm going to do is just for this example, is just press R and go to resize and just kiss that in. And for the resize, double click on it. I'm going to try and make this uh, work to this res. So I'm going to go 800, 800, and then go to height and go 600. And then I'm going to change my width uh, aspect ratio to 1.33. And then select that, press F4. See, it's not right, but then I'll go from center crop to fill. We go here, press F4, and I'm going to go control G to grab that into the frame buffer, control escape, look at the result, F4, control B, compare and go grab one, just swipe this guy along, see it's slightly off, this could have been my FBX I made, but again, most, most definitely probably is the FBX that I made, you know, if you got the FBX from this, it would line up. Um, but the main thing here though is if we did only need that to happen on this area because we've set this up using post mat, I'm just going to back click and go reset, select it and press F4 and turn off the buffer. And the main thing again is um, because we've set this up and we've got the points position, all we need to do is press F3, select in here, make sure it's a 16 float, select here, sorry, select in pick, just scrub along around this armpit area, select there. Press F4 and again pull up on the tolerance and you see now we're getting a mat focus exactly where we want it. I'm just going to select in there and go 50. Give it a second to update and that's way too much so I'm going to go 25. You can see quickly isolate that and I'm just going to put the softness up to 15. Give it a second and you see there we go and again if we scrub through you see it's only affecting there. Now again if we were going to use this and if this did line up, you know, again, you could quickly, really, really easily just go and go down to effects nodes, press L, grab a logic op, make that our front, make this our back, and then make the output from this our mat. Um, again, these aren't the same. That's a 16 float. 
Uh, again, these don't line up properly for this example, although they can now, which is quite interesting. Again, we scrub through. It's not doing exactly what we want. But again, I'm going to go from add to multiply. Just how we want. But um, again, if we got the right export from an action um, through FBX, um, we could quickly dial in what we need um, to suit exactly what they're asking. Um, and again, the best thing about this is it eliminates the need for Roto, which um, is the devil as far as I'm concerned. All right, that's it for this quick tip, guys. Um, I hope you found it useful. Uh, stay tuned for more.